What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to build the game of life in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so let me just show you what we're going to end up with. This is the game of life implemented in Python using Pygame and now I can use my mouse here to place individual cells. I can also drag my mouse to place multiple cells. And the game of life for those who don't know it uh, has some very basic rules. If a cell that is alive right now, so a cell like this one here is surrounded by zero or just one cell, it's going to die due to loneliness. If a cell is surrounded by two or three neighbors, it's going to survive. If it's surrounded by more than uh, three neighbors, it's going to die due to overpopulation. And if uh, a cell that is not alive, like any of those cells here that are not clicked yet, uh, if one of those cells is surrounded or neighbors three active cells, it is going to come to life. And now I have this playing field here. I can also add some more stuff here if I want to. And now if I press space, you can see that the game of life is happening. I can also pause and I can press space again. And that is essentially how the game of life works. These basic rules uh, produce these structures. Now you can also, I think I can also add some cells while I'm doing this here. So I can also manipulate the game while it's going. And we're going to learn how to do this today in Python. Alright, so first things first, we need to install Pygame. And for that, we open up a command line and we type pip install Pygame like that. In my case already installed. In addition to that, we're also going to need numpy. So we're going to type pip install numpy like that, in my case installed as well. And once we have that, we're going to start by importing the core Python module time for obvious reasons. We're going to import Pygame and we're going to import NumPy as NP. And the first thing I want to do here in the code besides the imports is I want to define um, some basic colors because we're going to reuse colors quite often and we don't want to constantly remember the RGB codes and copy them. We want to have some constants here. So I'm going to start with a color for the background and this is going to be a pretty dark gray. So 10, 10, 10. I want to have a color for the grit. This is going to be still pretty dark, but a little bit lighter. So 40, 40, 40. Those are RGB values. Um, and then I want to have a color for die next, die next iteration. So basically want to have white if you're alive, and you're going to stay alive and want to have um, a very light gray, but still not white if you're going to die next round. So something like 170, 170, 170. And then color alive next is going to be just pure white. So 255, 255, 255. Those are the colors. Now the main function that we're going to use for basically everything is going to be the update function. In addition to the update function, we're only going to have the main function, which is going to execute everything. But the update function has the whole game logic and the whole uh, drawing process in it. So we're going to say update and we want to have the parameters screen. This is going to be the ordinary pie uh, game screen that we're going to pass here. We want to have cells. This is going to be the whole playing field. So the whole um, the whole state of the individual cells um, and want to have the size. This is going to be the size of an individual cell. And then last but not least, we want to have with progress, which is a Boolean and want to set it to actually false. So the basic idea here is that Sometimes we want to update uh, the screen without moving to the next generation. So we just want to update the screen to see the changes uh, to to plot everything, but we don't want to go to the next generation. We don't want to make a step, so to say. Um, so in this case, with progress is going to be false and with progress equals true would be also executing the next steps, applying the game rules, so to say. So we're going to start here with updated cells, which are going to be uh, returned at the end of the function. And this is going to be an NP dot empty. So an empty numpy array of the following shape, it's going to be the cells, cells shape, zero and cells, shape one, like that. Um, so this basically creates it takes the shape of the already existing cells, and it creates an empty array. So basically nothing in there. And based on that, we're going to then uh, in this in this updated cells array, we're going we're going to apply the changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for row and column in NP ND index cell shape. So what this does essentially takes this, the shape of the 
cells of the playing field and it lets us iterate over each individual cell rollum, uh, row and column wise. So we take the first cell, then the next one, the next one, the next one, so on. So we go through all the cells, all the individual cells, and we're going to apply the game rules now. So we're going to say, okay, calculate the number of alive neighboring cells. So what we're going to do is we have the cell itself. And then we want to see, okay, all the cells surrounding it, how many of those uh, are alive? How do we do that? We say NP sum, and we go to cells, row minus one. So we go one to the uh, one, one to the top, so one up, and we want to go until row plus two. Now, why plus two? Why not plus one? Uh, this is not because of the game logic, this is because of how Python works when we slice lists. Because when you say, for example, one colon five, the one is included, the five is not. So one colon five would actually go up to four, including four, it would not include five. So if we want to include row plus one, we need to say row plus two. That's just basic uh, slicing and column minus one, column plus two. So the basic idea is you take a cell, you take the top left cell and the bottom right cell, everything in between, you sum it up, and then you have the amount of alive cells in that range. Now you want to subtract from that the cell itself. So cells row call because that cell is also part of that range here. And if it's one, you have one more alive cell that you actually don't want to count. So you subtract whatever the cell is. If it's zero, it basically doesn't change anything. If it's one, it subtracts one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, the color by default, we're going to set the color in the if else structure below here, but we're going to say, okay, by default, the color is going to be color underscore background. Um, if the cells row column is equal to zero, else it's going to be color alive next, like that. And now we're going to apply the game rules. And this is what I talked about in the preview, we're going to say, okay, if a cell so if cells row column, the current cell that we're looking at has the state one, so is alive, then we said, okay, if it is alone, or only has one neighbor, it's going to die. If it has two or three neighbors, it's going to survive. If it has more, it's going to die as well. So those are the rules that we need to check. So we say if alive is less than two, and remember, alive is the sum of all the neighbors that are alive. If it's less than two, so basically one or zero, or if it's greater than three, so overpopulation, then we're going to die. So this cell is going to die then. And this only happens if we have with progress equal to true. Otherwise, we don't apply the game rules, remember. Um, so what we do is we say, okay, color equals color underscore um, die next, like that. Um, the other situation that we have is that um, two is less or equal to a life, less or equal to three. Um, then what we do is we say that the updated cells, um, actually, yeah, actually, this works, Our row column at this cell is going to be one. So if we have that case, we essentially just set the updated cells to one in that position, because that means we survive the next generation. Um, and then what we do here as well is we say, okay, if the progress is being applied, if we want to display the progress, we say, uh, color alive next. That's the basic idea here, we don't know anything because uh, yeah, we, we, we die anyways, right. So here, we don't have to update anything. Um, the other branch is okay, the cell is not alive. But remember, if we have three exactly three neighbors, the cell will be alive. So we're going to say, okay, if alive equals to exactly three, we're going to say, okay, this cell now is also alive, row column. And if we also display the progress, we're going to set the color to color alive, like that. Um, yeah, so that's the basic idea. And the last thing that we do here is we say pi game draw dot rectangle. So basically drawing the individual pixels in the color, we draw onto the screen that was passed to the function with the color that was determined. And now we write, uh, we, we go to the column times the size row times the size. So we go to the position, an individual cell has a certain size. So we need to go as many cells as columns um, to write, and as many rows as uh, we have uh, down. 
And then we say size minus one, size minus one. And this plots a rectangle. And last but not least, we return the updated cells. I hope I didn't make any mistakes here, but that's the basic code. That's the basic idea that we use here. So now we take that function and we use it in a main function. So we say main def main. And we want to do here, first of all, we want to initialize Pygame. We want to create a screen by saying Pygame dot display dot set mode. And we're going to use a classic uh, 800 600. So basically, if you want to to keep the size flexible, you would um, define something like a size 10, for example, and then you would say uh, 80 times 10 or 80 times the size and so on. But I'm just going to go with 800 and 600. So um, that's the idea here. And we're going to initialize the cells here as being uh, NP zeros. And we're going to have uh, the shape 60 and 80. Now it's important that we have the shapes the other way around. Now let me just see if I because I remember that there was a little bit of confusion while I was preparing the code because we need to, um, to flip the dimensions here, we need to say 60 80, not 80 60. But besides that, we just create the cells and then we fill the screen with the background color. So with color BG, or actually no, we fill the screen with color grit, and then this uh, produces the grit later on. And what we do now is we say update screen cells 10 without progress. So this basically means we have the grid color as the background. And what we do is we go to each individual cell and we fill it with the background color unless we have a reason not to because there is a cell. So in the beginning, we don't, we don't have any cells because we only have zeros, which means that after filling with the grid and putting all the empty cells onto the screen, we're going to have mostly the background color. That's the idea of filling the screen with the grid. And then we say pygame dot display dot flip. And oh, come on. And update like that. And then all we need to do is we need to say running, running equals false, while true. And now here we have the game loop. And the basic idea of the game loop is that uh, we're going to to be asking for key inputs all the time. And if we notice that I'm pressing the space button, for example, it's going to trigger that running is going to be set to true. And this is going to trigger the update process being executed with progress. So uh, that is what we're going to do here. We have this endless loop. And we're going to say now for event that happens in pygame event dot get. So for each event, we get here if the event type is equal to pygame.quit. So that's just the ordinary uh, quitting in pygame. Um, then what happens is we basically just exit. So we say pygame.quit and then we return from that function. Otherwise, if the type of event, and this is where we now add the key, if the event type is pygame.key down, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to ask which key it was because we don't want to react to every key if the event dot key is equal to pi game dot k underscore space. So if we pr uh, press the space button, that means that we're going to now change the state. So this is going to toggle the running because we also want to be able to pause the whole thing. So we're going to say running is essentially not running changing the state of running, which means that if it's true, it's now going to be false. If it's false, it's now going to be true and so on. Um, and then we're going to update the screen, the cells with the sign, uh, size 10. The basic idea of this is that when we pause, we want to have an updated screen and we don't want to, to um, have more stuff happening just because we didn't update uh, when, when we stopped. So graphically, it just looks better. And then we're going to say pygame display dot update so that we can see now, okay, we're done. Uh, we're pausing or we're continuing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say if pi game, this is the probably the most important part because we want to add some cells, if pi game dot mouse dot get pressed. So if we have pressed the mouse, 
uh, we want to know, okay, where is it pressed? We want to get the position. So we're going to say pause equals pygame dot mouse dot get pause for get position. And then we're going to say that the cells at that position, the cell at that position is going to be set to one, because with a mouse, we activated that cell. So we're going to say, okay, position one, again, think invertedly here. Um, position one floor divided by 10 floor divided by the size if you have a constant and position zero floor divided by 10 that is going to be set to one. And then we're going to update the screen cells 10 and we're going to say pi game display update. There you go. And every time we're going to fill the screen again. So screen dot fill with color grid. That is the basic idea. Now we don't have yet the whole progress with the progress. So we say, okay, if running is actually true. So if we press space, and now the whole thing is running, we're going to say cells equal and this is important. The first time now we get the actual return value cells equals update screen cells. 10 with progress true. So this is the actual simulation and then pi game display update. And last but not least time sleep 0 0 1. 0 0 0 1 actually. Okay. And now if name equals main, then call main. That is the whole thing. Now before we recap the code, let me see if that actually works. So here I can now place some things. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, almost <laughs> some some problem here. Let me see where we did that. I think it has to be somewhere in the update function. Okay, so I think I found my mistake actually quite a stupid mistake, especially since I did a NumPy course just recently. Of course, we don't want to use the empty function because the empty function just allocates space and it leaves the values that are there by default. So it doesn't initialize that with zeros. And if we have something that's not a zero, of course, uh, yeah, this is problematic. So we want to use the zeros function instead, not the empty function. And now I think it should work. So if I just create some cells here again. There you go. Now this looks like it works. Yeah, okay. So that's the basic idea. Now let's recap the code so that we can summarize what we have been doing here. Um, here we have the constants for the colors here, the update function is the most important function. It's the function that applies the game rules and also updates uh, the, the display. So basically plots all the individual cells. So we create an updated cells now with zeros, not with empty because we want to have zeros in there and not just some random values. We iterate over all the individual cells by iterating through rows and columns. We calculate the alive cells, alive neighbor cells. We determine the color based on this, uh, whether the cell is alive or not. So the default color, and then we apply the rules. And if we have the with progress on, which is only in the last call of the function that we do in every iteration, um, we change the color depending on the game rules which you can see here, then we draw the rectangle. And here, all we do is we initialize um, a playing field with 60 times 80 or 80 times 60. With the respective resolution, we plot the grid on top of the grid, we plot all the individual cells, uh, we update the display. And now we wait for key presses. So if we have space, we change the state of the Boolean running. Um, and if we press the mouse, we determine the position of the mouse, and we set that respective cell to one. And if the whole thing is running, we update the cells and actually also visually update the cells and we return. And then we repeat the whole process. This is how you implement the game of life in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.